So now we've got the torso sorted out, let's move on with the rest of the body. And just before we get started with the next piece, I've got an issue with my model, which I think is going to be handy for me to show you how to fix, even if you've not got the issue with yours. So I'll make sure symmetry is turned off, and then to fix this wonkiness at the bottom, if I go into edit mode, let's just turn on the overlays, and we'll select this bottom ring by holding Alt and clicking on the uh, loop that I want. I just want to turn on proportion editing. You'll notice it's quite slow if I try and make an uh, edit. And it's really too slow to work with comfortably. It, uh, it's sort of uh, going to take a long time to get the right result. And the reason for this, if we just come back out of edit mode and then out of full screen, we've still got these uh, modifiers that are calculating every time we make a move. And that's because we've got this little icon here turned on that says, Effect edit mode. So I'm going to turn these off for both of these modifiers. And then if I go into uh, edit mode, you can see it's immediate. So I'm just going to get it approximately level. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to control the fall off so it only affects the areas that I want. And that's done by using the mouse wheel to increase or decrease the fall off area. All right. I'll do. Back out of uh, ed edit mode, and you can see now those modifiers are working again. So let's move on to the hip area. We'll add a mesh, and we'll go with a cube. We'll give it a few subdivisions, Control 5, and we'll apply that as well, Control A. I'm going to move it down a bit, get it into uh, the right area, scale it down as well, just so it's more in proportion, somewhere about there. And then we'll do Control A and we'll apply the scale. And then we'll go into sculpt mode and we'll start making amendments to the shape of it. I'll go with the grab brush again and make sure we've got symmetry turned on in the tools. Go down to symmetry section and we want it to be on the x axis. And then whatever change I make on one side is going to happen on the other side as well. So let's try going with a flatten brush actually instead of a grab on this area. I want to flatten this out so this can be where the legs rotate. And then we can use the grab brush to bring it in. And then we'll pull it in a little bit to get sort of a buttock shape. Or pull it out, maybe easier. In fact, we might draw it on instead. Make sure the strength's turned down quite a bit. And then we can use the grab brush after we've created those buttocks to uh, scale it more how we want it. Use the grab brush and then we'll just bring those across. Let's turn up the uh, the radius of it a little bit. Maybe bring these in a little bit. bit more of a crevice, maybe a bit more shape as well. This time rather than painting the, uh, the mask on, we'll go into edit mode instead. And we're going to select the central area. I'll go into isolation mode so it's easier to see what I'm doing from the top, so we can find that central area more easily. Go into face mode. I'm just going to select what I, what I think is the middle area, which is probably about here. And then I'm going to do Control Plus to grow that area. And of course, what you could have tried is Alt clicking on an edge until we get a, a loop all around. I hope that you can see that edge. It's uh, on the video about there. So, that'll do. And then we'll do select, select loops, and then we'll select the inner region. And that'll select that area for us. What we can do at this point is uh, just delete it if we wanted to. Or if we want to see if we can get it a little bit smoother, we can go back into sculpt mode and we can say face set from edit mode selection. And then we can use the mesh filter again to relax the face set. And that will round it off a little bit for us to give us a nicer result. And then we'll do the same as before. H, edit mode, A, X, F, 
Alt H to unhide, and then we've got that shape we want there. So that'll do for the hip area, and we're going to do the same thing as before for the rest of the model. Right click it, shade smooth, we'll give it a material, and we'll go with the. Uh, that looks pretty good. Is that the same one we've got on the rest of the body? Let me just come out of isolation mode. I believe if we go to the material, this one is material 003, and this one also is not material 003. So make sure we select the same one, and then when I modify material 3, it will affect both. Now, what I'll do, I will add the same modifiers. So I'll click on this one, shift click on this one, press Ctrl L, and I want to say, Copy modifiers, and that will copy the modifiers from the active object to all of the selected objects. In this case, just the pelvis. So let's move on to the legs. Shift A, mesh, and we'll go with a, let's go with a cylinder for this one. And we'll scale it down, move it into place, get it approximately the right uh, thickness. Control A to apply the scale into edit mode. We'll select this top face, move it up a bit, Make sure in face mode. And then we can go into the front view. We can rotate that. Make sure in orthographic. And we'll go into ghost mode. I want to rotate it until it's about level. With the rest of the robot. Scale it up. I'm going to probably add a loop here, move it up a bit, and we'll scale it out. Maybe take the bottom face now, go into side view, just bring that down a bit, and I think we'll bring these edges across a little bit as well. We should probably turn off proportional editing at this point, just to make sure we don't move things we don't want to move. We'll scale it up a little bit, and then we'll extrude the thigh out a little bit as well. And then we'll extrude it out to create the knee area, and then extrude again for the calf. We'll scale that in. Do control R. Give it two. Scale those out. That's going to be the ankle. Do the same for the uh, for the knee. But this time I just want to bring out the front areas. So control click. Shift click this one, control click this one. And then we can move those on the y-axis. And maybe we'll turn proportional edit on for this one. Control two. But before we do that. I want to add a bit of a bevel or inset on this top bit. So into edit mode, number three, select faces, and then I'm just going to do I to inset that a little bit. And we'll select this other edge in edge mode, control B, just a bit of a, a bevel there. That will make sure we get a, uh, we don't lose that shape on the edge. So if we now come out of edit mode, control three, you can see we're keeping that shape more, uh, getting a nice sharp edge. Apply that subdivision modifier. And then we can start giving it a bit more shape. Let's go into orthographic mode. Just to make sure we're only moving it forwards or backwards. Or left and right, depending on the view. So I'm just going to tweak now. I'll speed it up a little bit because we've already covered all these tools. So basically just try and get your leg looking nice. And if you're not very good at sculpting or you can't remember what a leg looks like, what you could do is go onto Google and just get some reference images. So for example, here I've gone and chosen, I've just typed in on Google female legs and just find something that's uh, easier to view from the front. And then you can get an idea of the, uh, um, of the shape. Anyway. So we'll come back in here, and we want to, uh, obviously these legs are way too small. So I'm going to scale all this up. We'll come back out of uh, edit mode. I'll select both of these. I'm just going to scale, and I want to scale based on the 3D cursor. So I'm going to shift S, 
and choose cursor to selected. That's going to put the cursor at the origin of the pelvis, which is where I want to scale from. And if I select both items, press comma on the keyboard, and I want to say orientation global. Now I press full stop on the keyboard, and I want the pivot point to be the 3D cursor. So now when I scale, it's going to scale from that 3D cursor. Let's get this more uh, realistically proportioned in uh, context with the top part. Going to orthographic. So that's pretty good, actually. Maybe about there. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. I could probably make the leg a little bit longer. Let me do that. I'm going to uh, sculpt mode. Make sure I've got the grab brush on. We'll just pull that down a bit. And don't forget, when you've finished scaling the objects, it's always a good idea to come back into object mode and then apply the scale with Control A. So that's the leg. We'll move on to the uh, arms now. We're only going to do one side because we can mirror it at the end, and that will save us quite a bit of work. We need to do it in a T pose as well. So let's uh, start off by adding an object. We'll come back out of here and Shift A. And what we could do, in fact, we could just use the leg. So let's, let's do that. I'm going to copy the leg. And I'm going to change the pivot point back to the uh, medium point. Then we'll rotate this around. Scale it in. That's actually not a bad, uh, uh, that's not a bad looking arm, considering it's a leg. <laughs> so I'll just tidy it up the best I can with the grab brush and the other sculpt tools. And then we'll, uh, we'll continue. And so we can get rid of this flat part, we need a bit more geometry, more evenly spread out. So we'll just remesh it again using the Sculpt Tools remesher with Shift R. And then we'll use Control R to remesh. That'll remesh it and it gives us a bit more even topology. And then we can start bringing that back out. We can smooth it off. We can grab it. And again, just using the basic tools to get the shape that I want. And then I'll refer to some reference images as well, just to give me a little bit of a helping arm. What I want to do now is split this into individual parts, and we're going to have a uh, elbow joint in the middle. And we'll go with a box face set, or in fact, let's go with the lasso. We're going to top view, and then I'm just going to draw just there. We'll do a smooth, and then H, same as before, edit mode A, X, F. Alt H to unhide, back out, and then we've got two parts there for the arm. And then we can go back into sculpt mode, we can just modify it a little bit if we want. And I want to make a hole in the end as well, so let's do that with the face set brush. Mesh filter, H to isolate it, into edit mode, delete it, and then we've got that hole cut out as well. And then We'll come back out of sculpt mode, right, into, edit, into object mode, shade smooth. And then we'll do the same for the leg. Get rid of the bottom. What I'll do for this one, I'll just do the alternative method in edit mode and we'll expand it out. The problem with this is though, obviously, we're not getting that nice, um, relaxed, smooth edge. So what I'll do, I'll go in sculpt mode and I'll say face sets from edit mode selection. And I'll just smooth that. And then we'll X, F, and that's the same thing. And then for this bottom portion there, which has got that weird lumpiness going on, I want to get rid of that. What we can do is remesh it. So we'll use the method we used initially on the top part of the body, which I was going to need to do anyway. So let's do that on the leg. Go into quad remesher, or again, if you're not using quad remesher, go into the data panel and then remesh options down here, choose quad. And I'll click on remesh. And it's succeeded. If we go in, you can see we've now lost that um, wobbly surface because it's got a much lower face count, which obviously is better for animating as well. This one, we don't particularly need to do that because this is already pretty good in terms of quad flow and quad count as well. Right, so let's do the same for the arms. Give it a material. So I want to give this one and this one the same material as the hip. So I'll select both the arms and the legs, shift click on the hip, and then we'll do Control L, and we'll say we want the materials. 
and then that will apply this material to uh, all of these other objects as well that we've got selected first. So the next thing I want to do is add the hand. Now I'm absolutely terrible at modeling hand. So in the next video, I'm going to show you a very easy way we can model complex shapes like hand if we've got not the greatest knowledge of anatomy.